Hey everybody, Tracking Pat here again with Mr. Tony Casillas. And today we're covering uh, some more things on how to do milling and arcs and things like that. Because again, from the field, we get a little bit of different questions sometimes. And uh, so what do you got for me today, Tom? Well, today I got this interesting question, Pat. What I'm trying to figure out is, what's the difference and the pros and the cons when I just need to connect a mill event to a straight arc event? You know, and when does it make sense to just go ahead and use a profile? It mills and arcs. Okay. Well, that makes sense because really that probably happens all the time, right? I mean, very seldom do you only cut straight lines and right and, and such like that, you know? So whether you're just rounding off a corner or something like that, there's a lot of times where you're going to have to connect the two types of events together, mm -hmm. right? And uh, we've talked in other videos about some of the things that are great about standard mills and arcs, like changing the, the Z axis right. or changing feeds and speeds and stuff like that. But then we've also talked about all the benefits to using the AGE profiles mm -hmm. because it shortens the process, it gives you AGE capability, gives you multiple cuts in the Z-axis, things like that. But you can't change feeds and speeds or cut in the Z-axis. Mm -hmm. So it's like, when's the best way to do either one? And the truth of the matter is, most of the time, the part that you're cutting is flat. Right, so most of the time the Z axis is only included in what we call two and a half axis work. Right. We're bringing the Z down to a certain dimension and then we're doing all the work in the mm -hmm. X and Y, right? That's correct. So therefore either one could work. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to program here and I'm just gonna talk about, we're talking about connecting these two as opposed to them automatically being connective if wanted in a profile, right? right? So let's say I wanna do something like, I wanna cut across the part in a straight line, then I want to add an arc, and then I want to cut another straight line. Right. Okay. If I want to do that, and it's all in the Z, C, in the Z, same Z plane. Sorry about that. I would probably do it in a profile, unless there was some particular reason that I had to change feeds and speeds. Mm. But the other thing that's a benefit to the profile is the multiple cuts and the finish cut. Right. right? I can get away with that in here by lying to the tool and doing some other things, but it's a little more work. Mm -hmm. If I've got the Z axis included, now it's a big deal. But let's start out with just a standard X, Y plane. Okay, so let's say I'm gonna start at minus three inches and zero. Okay, and I'm gonna go to minus two inches, so just a straight line of one inch long, right? Now, if I want to connect this to something coming up, I can use the Conrad, which is going to blend an arc between the events. Let's say we throw a quarter inch in there, okay? Normally, in a case like this, I would be machining with the tool offset to cut this part, right? Mm -hmm. So I've got my default set at left. I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to throw in an RPM of 1,000, throw in some feed rates for the Z and the machining, and use tool number one, and you see I got a line right there, right? Nice. So now I want to connect an arc to that line. So when I go to arc, remember, whenever I'm connecting events, whether they're both mills, one's a mill, one's an arc, or both arcs, my first four questions are always no change or ink set, mm -hmm. right? Start where I just left off. Right. Now, I want to take that arc 180 degrees over to the other side of zero. So I'm going to end at a positive two. Y and Z are still going to end up at zero. Mm -hmm. And my X, Y, Z center in this case is all zero, mm. okay? I want to put a Conrad on the other side, put in that 250 again, right? I can tell it whether this arc goes clockwise or counterclockwise. But I, in this case, I'm just going to keep it, uh, let's think about the easier way to do this. I'm going to go counterclockwise with this one. So I'm going to change it from clockwise to counterclockwise. Leave the tool on the left, use the same feeds and speeds. There's that arc, okay? okay. I got one more milling event. So again, you know the rules, one, two, three, four, right? No change. X ends at three, nothing else moves from zero, okay? So as I enter all the rest of the questions, there you go, okay? So I'm looking at this from the top view and you can see how it blends that arc in between and machines straight through there. Nice. Okay. Now, that's a pretty simple thing to do and in the profile, I would have had to answer a few less questions. Plus, if we deal with that function where we got problems with arcs and mm. we don't have all the right dimensions, we'd have had the AGE features, right? If I needed to do this in multiple cuts, now I'd have to use a repeat and tell it how deep to cut each time and how many times to get to my bottom level. So I start adding a lot more programming in mills and arcs than I would have to have done in a profile, right? Right. But 
what if I was looking at this from the front view and I needed that to do that in the z-axis, ah, right? That's a very good one. That's a whole different world, isn't it? So I can still do that, but what I would do is I'd have to start out at event number one and remember my first rule about z-axis machining, tool stays on center, right? That's right. So now I would have to do that for all three of these, like so. And then when I go back to my arc, all I would really have to do is give it some indication that I'm moving the z-axis, okay? So if I were to come down here now, instead of the center of my arc being zero, 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 let's say that the center of my arc is zero, zero, but the z is a half an inch, okay? Mm -hmm. Notice on the screen, it looks like a straight line. Right. The reason is because I'm not looking at the right view. Now I have to switch to the front view, <clears throat> excuse me, and now you can see the same type of geometry, mm -hmm. but the machine now knows that it's moving across in zero and then going down into the material and coming back out. I can't do that in a profile, mm. okay? So in a case like this, if I was trying to do something like this or it was a trough I was trying to cut, once I had that done, I could do something now like do a sub repeat, right? And I could say, hey, let's repeat everything that we've done. Whoops, wrong number, right? And let's say we have a movement in the y-axis. So let's not change that, but let's move the y-axis. I'm gonna make it exaggerated, make it a hundred thousands, okay? And I'm gonna tell it, hey, let's do this 30 more times. And you're not gonna see anything right there, but when I go to 3D, you're gonna see that just with those few events, I've actually made it where I can cut an entire channel. And of course, I can make that step over be as small or as large as I right. need it to be to get a good part. Mm -hmm. Right? So this is the kind of stuff that I would have to use mills and arcs to do. And I could also make it, maybe I want that feed in line to be at 30 inches a minute and the machining to only be at 10 and then 30 again. Right. I can also do that in here, right? Save some time. Exactly. But if I'm only on the XY plane, then I could have just done it in a profile. So let's walk through that real quickly too. Thank you. Okay. So I'm gonna just go back to the edit mode and erase it because that's the fastest way to go. Yeah. And we're just gonna start over. So here I'm gonna go to profile. And like I said before, if it's not a circle and it ain't a rectangle, even a it's straight irregular. line is an irregular, right? So we start out with the first page. So we started at minus three, remember that? Mm -hmm. Everything else was at zero, right? Um, we can have a tool offset now when we're doing this, okay? We can use depth of pass if I got multiple cuts. So let's use that. Let's tell it uh, that our finished cut's gonna be 10 thousandths. And let me just back up for a second. Instead of starting at zero, let's say we need this to be an inch deep. Hmm. Okay, so I'm gonna actually take four passes, aren't I? Yes. Starting at zero and ending up at minus one inch. It's gonna put some feeds and speeds in here. Whoops, bad number. For anybody who ever wondered, I'm not actually left-handed. I also have the ability to use a rough tool and a finish tool, mm -hmm. right? That's another advantage to using the AGE profile. So there's my starting point. I've got a milling part. I'm gonna stop at minus two and zero. It's got an okay already, it says I got that, right. right? So I don't have to answer the rest of the questions unless I need some help with the math. I've got an arc to do, right? Now it asks me whether it's tangent to the first one. Mm. It's not, but the reason for that is to help you with the AGE functions of figuring out missing dimensions. Right. Usually it's not, so you just hit the set key. This is a counterclockwise arc because I'm doing it the same way as I did before. X ends at two inches positive. Y and Z stay the same, uh, right? So you notice there is no Z questions. Mm -hmm. So just zero, zero, zero. And let me do one more thing. Let's change this back to the top plane so it makes sense. Okay. Now you also notice in here that I forgot to put that Conrad, didn't I? Yeah, I saw that. Well, the great part about that is it's visual. So I can just come back in here and go, hey, you know what? I want that 250 Conrad. Done. Swipe forward again, put that last milling event in here and just say, hey, I want to end up at three inches and zero. There it is again. Of course, once again, talk sometimes without thinking. There's my other Conrad. Yeah, but okay. it's pretty powerful because as you're programming, you can visually see where, oh, I forgot something, and it shows also how simple it is to go back and input the information. That's true, and you know, that's only one of the features that sometimes we forget to show some people the other powerful features, right? Like, what if I did had a bunch of events and I don't remember? I see it's wrong. Right. I don't remember where it was. Well, you also have this feature in here, right? If I come back in here, there's something called list step. 
And as I push through list step, it shows me each event one at a time mm -hmm. and highlights. So if this was the one that I wanted to be different than a quarter, I'm right there. I could just say, hey, return. It puts me on that event. I could say, hey, you know what? Let's change that one to 375. Done. So it gives me visual editing. I can see exactly what I've got and what I want to do all at the same time. And it's all built in the control together. That's awesome. When I'm finally done, all I really have to do is get to the end of the program and say, end AGE. And now I've got all my other features back, right? So this is actually going to allow me to do four cuts in the Z axis, right? And leave a finish cut for the final pass. Nice. Those are things I don't get in standard mills and arcs, right? right. So there's definitely a reason to use one or the other. And you just have to think about, hey, what am I trying to do? What's the best way to approach this? And whatever you do, don't forget the no change key, because that <laughs> is the biggest time saver there is in all of road correct. track land, right? So I think that probably answers the question you and the viewers have, don't you think? I think so. Very cool. Well, I do appreciate your help as always. As for you guys out there, thanks again for watching this video, and we will see you in the next one.